Hey guys, Illusionist Jason Bishop. I'm back with another random magic review. This is where I pull up a random video online about magic. I watch it and I give you my thoughts on it. I've been really fortunate to be a professional illusionist for well over 10 years. I've had two successful shows in New York City. I performed in LA at the Magic Castle, headlining there multiple times. I've toured across the United States, going to 49 of the 50 states, sorry, South Dakota. I was also the cover story for Southwest Airlines in-flight magazine. You can still find that some places online. And now in between doing my own magic online virtually as well as doing my own projects at home and other work projects that I have in the works, I watch magic online and I give you guys my response, my reaction, my impressions of this stuff and hopefully I learned something. I've actually learned a ton by watching this stuff. It's certainly made me think even more about my own pacing and ideas and the magic I select and hopefully you guys learn something as well or, or better yet, just have fun doing it, whatever. Or the best, I guess, is to like learn something and have fun at the same time. That is probably the best, that merger of those two. So let's see what we got here. It is Spongebob's magic trick, Jordo, Jordo, Jord Jordano. I guess his name is Jordan and then it's an O. So Spongebob's magic trick, Jordano the Great, Victoria BC, corporate magician. So. That's interesting. So let's check this out, see what he does, see what we think. It looks like they're having fun in this still image so far, and here we go. We're gonna need a bonus here from the audience. You don't know if they love or hate Al. They're chanting his name, they want him up and out of there, or he's like the most fun guy, who knows? But that's an interesting corporate group there. It's it's fairly tight. I always think that it doesn't matter how big a room is to do your magic in, it matters how packed it is, like that it's got quite a few people in it. And this room looks like it has a pretty good energy because it's packed. A lot of these people obviously know each other, they're chanting this guy's name, and they have a lot of energy. This looks like a corporate luncheon, so I don't know how much they've been drinking per se, uh, maybe a little bit. I mean, I see wine glasses and stuff out there, but they know each other, they're having fun, it's the holidays. So it looks like a fun audience and they certainly have some energy, which energy is tough because energy can go against you very quickly or it can actually go with you if you harness that and run with it. I think even Jerry Seinfeld once said, you know, every show you feel like you're, you're barely keeping control. You're almost gonna lose control. And maybe that's a good thing, you know? So let's find out here. This might be tough to watch a little bit because the ambient audience noise is pretty loud compared to this guy's uh, microphone. If you look at his microphone, I'm not trying to be ultra critical of him, but a little tip there is you do want to get your mic pretty close to your mouth. He's got it really far away. A lot of people don't really understand that. Your P and your S's, they can be really sharp and they can be very explosive actually. And so you want to just check those. Puh. Puh, sa, sa. So when I'm working a theater or something and I'm doing a mic test, I'll always say, please be seated. Please be seated. So you can use that as well to just check your mic levels a bit. So he's maybe scared that if he gets too close to his mic, he's gonna be way too loud, but he's also got a wind guard on that mic. So that's gonna help reduce some of those, I think they're called plosives actually, it'll help mitigate some of that problem. So anyway, the point is, it's a little bit hard to hear over the, the crowd there, and I don't know how if his speakers are up or not and stuff like that. So I'm gonna take a listen here. Hopefully we can hear this, it's been posted, so hopefully it's, you know, something that can, we can watch and listen to. Now lay on the table. <laughs> <laughs> the it will break. <laughs> now first of all, Al, a good magician will roll up the sleeves, right? Yes, you're a good magician too, awesome. <laughs> Other good thing about a good magician will show you kneading in the hands like that. And if I just give it a blow, do you pick yellow, green, blue, or red? Orange. Uh, yellow. <laughs> yeah, you pick yellow? Okay, we'll use red then, okay? Well, I'm colorblind, all right? Yellow is red and red is yellow. Look at this. If I take the ball like this and place it into my hand like that and I give it a wave, watch it vanish. Did you see it go right back over there? Because look at this now. If I take it here, like watch me place it to the ear. I take the ball into the hand, right to the ear. You guys know how I do that? I got no brains, it just goes right through. Right? 
See, I don't look, it works for you too. Like you're <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's actually... They seem to enjoy him, that's good, but they really liked when he got this guy Al involved and people there seem to really like this dude Al. So that's a tough energy to work with because it can get a little rowdy, it can get out of hand quickly. I mean, as soon as they got up there, they said, lay on the table and they're kind of trying to take over this dude's show. So he has to be a little bit forceful. I mean, he seems like a nice guy and he's definitely got some skills actually here, but um, he's, he's a little recessive in his personality too. So he's not really taking control of that audience just yet. You know, it's a funny thing about taking control of an audience too, is like sometimes you wanna be louder than them uh, and try to like shout them down in such a way. But actually a really good tip I learned years ago is when an audience is being a little too energetic and, and you've, you've lost control. I mean, is there too much energy for an audience? I don't know, probably not. But if it's too much energy for you to control, then actually bring down what you say. Speak more quietly because then people have to listen. It brings them in a little bit. You alter the energy of the room with the energy that you put out. So if you start, you know, being really calm and quiet, maybe you, maybe you don't say anything. Maybe you reach in your pocket and you, you take something out and you look at it and you put it away. And now they're, what is, what's going on over there? It, it just depends on the room. You have to learn to feel out the audience, obviously. So let's see how he, how he continues on here. I just pretend to take the ball like that. You see, I pretend. So he actually did almost exactly what I said there. He goes, I, he goes, I pretend to take it there. And he got really quiet and he brought it in kind of tight. And then that focuses everybody's attention there. Oh, just like that, you know? And then his energy level went up a little bit after that. And that might meet the energy of the room. And that might not be good because it might bring up their energy too. So anyway, it's a really tough thing because ultimately you're facilitating them having a good time. And so you don't wanna come out with an energy level that's like totally different than the room and bring them down if they're having a lot of fun already. So it, it, it can be challenging. Let's see. It's already in the hand right now. So Al, I always pretend to leave it there, right? Yeah, wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want you to feel the ball, is it? This dude, Al, is actually a pretty decent uh, audience member because he's not a jerk, actually. There's, you, can, you, know, you guys know, you bring somebody up on stage and they try to take over and stuff. But this dude, he's, he's pretty darn good. He understands directions. He's interested in what's going on. And he has a really good attitude about this stuff. He's not being a jerk about it. He's not trying to mess anything up yet. I mean, maybe we'll see in a little bit. Maybe we'll try to hide something or cut something or throw a prop away or whatever. I doubt it, though. He seems like a fun guy who's not malicious. He's not trying to mess up the magician like some people do. So that's, um, he, he seems like a pretty good audience member, frankly. Soft and squishy. All right, I want you to hold this in your hand, all right? Nice and tight, nice and tight right there. All right, I'm gonna get another ball right here. Ball number two, watch it go from my hand here. <laughs> Right over to Al's hand there. For the magicians out there who are watching this, you know what to look for. You probably anticipated some of this. And I was about to say, Al is about to lose his crap because he just has that effusive, you know, energetic personality, that amazed personality. And you love audience members like that. I knew when he opened up his hand, he was just gonna kind of lose it. And he did. That is a great, great response. And that response then informs the response of the audience too. Now they're a little bit more amazed because Al's a little bit more amazed, right? We're, we're social animals, humans, right? So we all sort of mimic each other's responses. That's why when you yawn, other people yawn. It's a sympathetic response. Two, you got two balls. How many you got now? None. You got no balls out? Okay, okay, Al. How many balls you got? Two. You should have four now. You're not catching on. Okay. But now look, I want you to take these balls and hold them. He did the balls joke there. It's kind of a tongue in cheek thing. I'm not being critical of it overly. You know, you can go that way or not go that way about, you know, how many balls do you have as such? He went he went another step with it. He did another ball joke with it. It was kind of okay, not a big deal. Again, I'm not critical, 
but that's a limit. And it seems like this dude knows to stop at that limit. I don't know if he's going to or not, or if he's gonna do another one. It's a little bit cheap after a while. It gets a little too juvenile, but one or two tongue in cheek. I mean, I don't think anybody minds. I think it's funny. You know, you gotta read the room a little bit, obviously today, especially. But um, Al thought it was funny. The people around him thought it was kind of funny. It was a cute little, you know, gotcha kind of thing. But if you keep going with it, then it just becomes crass and lowbrow and, and it really brings down sort of the quality of, of your show, I think, at that point. So anyway, but I think this guy's skating that line pretty well right now. So let's see how he proceeds. Really tight again. Really tight. Nice and tight there. I got another ball right here. Ball number three goes from my hand here. Right over to your hand. Ball number three. Open it. Hail. Nice and slow. <laughs> go. One. Three balls. Just like that. Three balls. Now, Al, um... <laughs> You could not ask for maybe a better assistant than this dude, Al. He takes directions, he's attentive that way. Look at his big grin right now. He's still smiling at this. He emotes, he's got these big responses. I mean, that's a kind of audience member that makes you feel like your magic is better than you feel like it is sometimes. So he is a great audience member. And I think that the magician is doing a good job of influencing Al and taking the audience along where he wants them to. So he's doing a good job, in my opinion, frankly. So. Um, is he the best magician I ever saw? No. Is he the best audience manager I've ever seen? No, none of those things. But he's competent and he's smart and he's thinking these things through and, and that's good to see. So um, Al's got a crazy sweater here. I don't, it looks like there's a spoon on his sweater and stuff. He, Al looks like the fun guy. That's why everybody wanted Al to go up. He's just a fun dude. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> two balls, place them into the hand, that's two into the hand, that's one into the pocket. Simple math question, how many in the hand? Two. No, Al, you don't watch Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> this is right now. Look, 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 two balls go in the hand, one goes in the pocket, Al, it's always three. You see how that works? Look, two balls in the hand, one ball in the pocket, it's always three, Al, see? Look, two balls in the hand, one in the pocket, it's always two. Yeah, yeah. You got it right. You want to score Chester Street here, I got you. Yeah, but Al, watch this, throw all the marbles this time, watch. One ball, Al, goes in. Man, I appreciate this magician in the way that he, he knows where he's leading his audience, man. Like he led that guy right along there and ended up right at two and knew exactly that was gonna happen. So I guess he's done these routines a bunch of times or something because he, he knew exactly where he was going. I, I always appreciate that in a magician. That was cool to see, so. Into the hand, that's one into the hand and one ball into the pocket for all the marbles. How many in the hand now? One. That's Whoa, he got it, folks. Wow, are you psychic? Well, I don't know if you're psychic, but you might be a sidekick, right? Because, look, when I give it a blow, just like that, it vanishes, you see? That's good, Al. Okay, That was fun. It was interesting. It, it's interesting to see a magician working a corporate event like that. That looked like a legit corporate luncheon. Everybody knew Al, like I said. You know, and his job is to facilitate their fun. These people have worked all year. They're working in offices, whatever it is. They have, you know, whatever their job is. There's some kind of corporate thing. And, you know, they're receptionists and agents and all of these various people and stuff there. And, you know, it's I'm sure it's a tough job, whatever it is. And they go to this luncheon and there's some decent food and there's some booze. And you got this guy who comes out. And you don't want to make the show all about you. You want to make it about them enjoying themselves. So the dude had some jokes and he got Al involved and Al just had the greatest responses. I mean, you couldn't ask for maybe a better audience member than, than that guy Al was. You know, it's like, it's like Johnny Carson did on The Tonight Show. Like if you watch the Johnny Carson video, I think I've done a couple of them at this point. You know, Johnny Carson facilitated the fun evening there. He was as sharp as they come. He was as good of a writer as almost anybody and just, super sharp, super funny. But if he had a guest on the couch who was doing well, he just sort of framed them, you know? It, he would be a foil for them. It's, it's called a foil, right? And the foil idea is interesting. From my understanding, a foil is actually in reference to gems. Like if you have a diamond and a diamond sparkles under the correct lighting and, and everything. But the foil is like a little piece of metal that they put behind the diamond 
so that the diamond can sparkle more. And so that's what Johnny Carson would do. And that's what some good magicians do is you allow a person to shine with you. You know, you frame them in such a way and you sort of facilitate it that they can actually shine too. Like Al, when he's beaming and smiling and reacting, you don't want to step on that and go, I've got two balls, Al, and we're going to put them in your hand. You step back and you let him respond and you let him, you know, smile and you let him laugh. And a guy like Al might even say something funny, you know, oh, that's amazing and blah, 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 whatever. And it might be actually entertaining. And as soon as you see that starting to dip down and, and just go down a little bit and not be interesting anymore, then you step back in with the routine and take over. You know, you're always ready to take charge again and move on to the next thing. So interesting. It was fun. It was interesting to watch. You know, the guy definitely had some chops with the SpongeBob moves and stuff. I thought they were you know, pretty clean for the most part. You know, I have friends who are some of the highest level close-up magicians in the world. So I always have a weird meter on what I'm thinking about this way. And, and I know that some of the young magicians out there and other magicians are, are judging things and going, well, blah, 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 does this routine. And I would never use sponge balls. And I would, well, that's all fine, but I'm just judging this guy based solely upon what he did and how he did it. He didn't flash, he didn't expose, he was competent, he moved quickly with his routine. He moved competently with his routine. He knew exactly where he was going. He wasn't overly indicating what was what was going on, what was happening uh, as far as his technique. You know, it wasn't completely obvious. He knew exactly what pockets he was going to go to to deposit things or take out a new ball and stuff like that. Very competent that way, frankly. Um, I certainly think there were some other things to be critical of, but I'm not disparaging this guy, and I'm not going to, frankly. Um, I think you know he was maybe a little bit uncomfortable as a performer, just a little bit. Maybe his forte is more in the technical side of magic. I'm not sure. It looked like the guests were having a good time. Al was a great assistant. This gentleman, Giordano, did some good magic for his audience, for sure. They seemed to enjoy it. They seemed to enjoy the afternoon with him as such. So, you know, that's a success in my book, far and away, for sure. Especially if he got paid at the end, then it's a total success, obviously. So thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you viewing these, absolutely. I appreciate you taking your time to watch these things. If you enjoyed this video, please destroy that like button. Please subscribe if you wanna see new videos and hit the bell to get notified for when I post new videos and we will see you in the next one.